Hello everyone, this is Rollo with Winter Bros. In this video segment, we're going to show you how to archive your DAS Studio 4.8 installed content using a zip utility. The first step we're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to know where to, uh, your installed content is located so that you can actually back it up. So we're going to show you how to find out where you, your installed content for DAS Studio 4.8 is located uh, right within DAS Studio itself. Okay. Uh, the long way to find it is if you go up here to edit on the menu bar, excuse me, preferences, that'll pull up a submenu. Uh, go to content library tab up here, and then you'll see this really long bar called content directory manager. You click it, and it'll take you to where we want to go. Uh, we're going to show you a shortcut to this, uh, so we'll go ahead and close this real quick. I'll we'll show you the fast way to get there. If you have the uh, content panel open up in your screen, depending on what your layout and style is, uh, you can click this little options button here and you'll see on it the content directory manager is right here so you can get there directly without having to go through the preferences. Uh, right here you can see we have uh, a couple entries. Uh, we got the DAS Studio formats. If we expand it by clicking on the plus and the poser formats, we can click the plus. Now all these directories are important so depending on what your system configuration is you may want to use all of them, uh, back them all up or if you only can uh, concerned with doing just the DAS Studio format, you can do it individually or you can do them in separate zips. Uh, we're going to show you how to do, uh, for our setup here, our first and second entries for both formats is identical. So we're going to show you how to create the first, uh, create the zip file using the first, uh, we're actually we're going to use a second line right here. And then we, once we get that done, we'll show you how to add this one into a zip. We're going to be using the WinZip utility to do this. However, you can probably use uh, 7-Zip or any archiving utility that allow you to recursively save uh, directories, which is going to be very important. Now, we'll go ahead and close this really quickly, and we'll discuss one quick issue that you need to do before you actually start archiving. If you happen to have a, a laptop that you're using, or maybe you have a screensaver enabled on your computer, uh, we do recommend that before we start the actual archiving process that you disable your screensaver. Uh, just in case you have a really long um, set of content uh, and also to speed it all up. And if you're on like a laptop or something with a battery backup, uh, you might want to disable the, any of the power saving modes like sleep mode, which will shut it down and might interrupt the, uh, the building of your archive. These are just recommendations. You do not have to do either one. Uh, if you have a small content library or if you are just going to sit at your computer and wiggle your mouse for once in a while, uh, it's all up to you. Uh, but they still should uh, they should still process the fine. Uh, the biggest one would be the computer not going into sleep mode. And the third important thing is uh, when you do actually, and we've already discussed this a little bit, we touched on it real quickly, is that whatever archiving utility you decide to use, make sure that you can save the recursive path of the files, so that if you do have to restore anything or recover any of your data. Uh, you don't just have a whole pile of files, you actually have them stored in their actual uh, folder directory uh, structures that they were originally installed in. So without any further ado, we're going to go back to show you how to uh, get to those content directories and how to uh, zip them up. And what we said, like we said earlier, we're going to, uh, you can do this one of two ways. You need to jot down these two paths or, or how many paths you actually have installed on your computer, uh, how many content sets. Um, for us, it's just two because they are identical for the Poser and DAS Studio formats, so we're going to do that. You can jot them down manually, or we're going to show you a quick trick how you can use something like Notepad or any kind of text editor to actually just copy these. So right here, you can see we're on the second one here, uh, going to the old DAS Studio for my library. And what we'll do is we'll click this Edit button, and it'll pop up a, our it'll pop up our file browser. So we can just click up in this bar. And there's that path, so we can just right-click on it and copy it. Of course, we are using the Windows version. You can cancel this. Uh, I'm not sure how you would do it on the Mac, but I'm sure it's pretty similar. Then we'll bring up a text editor. In this case, we're going to be using Notepad for Windows. And we'll go ahead and just paste that file uh, path in there so we don't have to manually type it. And then we'll go back, and we'll repeat the process for the other one we need to get to. We'll click on it, and we'll go to Edit. And then we'll bring up the browser again. We'll click up in here and then right click on it to copy it. Then we'll close that out. And then we'll go back to our text editor. And then we can uh, paste that in so we can use it. So now we've got both of the paths that we need. 
So we really don't need uh, the content manager anymore. So let's go ahead and close that. And since we don't necessarily want Das Studio to interrupt our workflow as we're archiving, um, just in case we have something pulled up, uh, we'll go ahead and close that too. And then we'll go uh, and do our archive. So you have to do that with WinZip. So now the first thing we're going to do is uh, we want to get uh, that first path out of our text editor here. So we just copy that line uh, and get it into the Windows clipboard buffer. And then what we're going to do is pull up our file explorer. And we'll go up into this top line here and we'll click on it. And then you can either control V or you can right click paste to get that path in there and then hit enter. And now it takes us to our DAS Studio 4 for a section of our content that we want to uh, save. Uh, you can see here it shows my library. Let me go expand this all the way. Uh, but however, since that is the one we want to zip, uh, we're going to go up one level. So just follow the folders so you see the next outdent. So we'll click it, and you'll see now the My Library is on the right. So there it is. So we'll click it on the right side. And on our computer, since we have uh, WinZip installed, we'll right click. We'll do WinZip, add to zip file. And it should pull up a dialog. Now we're going to be doing a new. For the first time you do it, you're going to do a new folder. So we'll go ahead and go uh, tell it we're going to make a new zip file. And what we're going to do is, because a lot of places you can't write to, we'll just go straight to the documents library. And uh, here's the one we previously made, but we're going to make a new one for the purpose of this uh, video. So we recommend that you go ahead and use the day, uh, the year, the month, and the day, or whatever order is good for you, so you'll know when you actually created this. And so we're going to call this one My Content with 2015. 11.2, uh, which is today's date, and dot .zip, since we are using WinZip, and we'll do create, and there you go, you can see it filled it up in here for us. So now the next important step before you click anything else is this save pull full path info. Now I'm not sure what it looks like in 7-zip or other utilities, but that's what you want to make sure you do, because that's going to save recursively all the fo uh, folder and file structures uh, in the uh, for your content. And we go ahead and include the system and hidden files, just in case there's something in there. And then once we do that, we'll click Add. And then WinZip will real quickly find all those, and it will create the uh, file for us. Uh, you can see that it did close out, but we will go up here to My Documents, and we will scroll down. And you can see it's right there. It created it for us. If we open this really quick before we use it again, I'll show you how it's stored. Uh, you can see it stored all the stuff that we found all the way down. And here's the My Library. And it shows the whole structure or how it was, uh, what work found everything. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our text file because we still have that other folder to. Uh, this is actually the one that probably has most of our content in it. Uh, we will begin this process, but we won't finish it because on our computer we have over 4,000 products installed, and it took over four hours when we ran this uh, as a demo earlier. So, but we'll go ahead and click this path. And this will give you a complete, if you do all the paths that are in your content directory manager, you will get everything you've installed for your DAS Studio. So we copy that, and then we'll go back to the uh, File Explorer, and we'll go back in this bar, and we'll paste that one in. And we'll go there, and once again, you can see, here's the My DAS 3 library on the left. And you can see if you go up one level, it's under Public Documents. And since we want it to be on the right, we'll, we'll go up there and click that one time. And there it is on the right, still selected. So this time, we'll go ahead and do the right click. And we will do WinZip, add a zip file again. However, in this case, since we already have a zip file uh, that we created, uh, we're going to use Open instead of New. So the second time, you won't. And then you'll go browse to where you created it. And here's the one we created. So we'll click it one time, and it popped up here in the file name. We'll click Open. And then again, we want to go ahead and ensure we save the full path and save the include files. And then once you get all that and everything's intact, you'll click Add. And uh, you'll repeat the same process if you have more than two uh, places that your content stored. And be careful to look at your poser formats, because if they are different places, you want to make sure you add all those uh, so you can get all your uh, poser compatible stuff. Uh, well, like I said, we're not going to go ahead and click Add here now, because we know how long it's going to take. But at this step, you would finish, and we'll go show you what it looks like in the final product. So let me go ahead and just cancel that real quick, even though you would have ran it. And since we did place ours on the documents file earlier, we will go show you. 
Uh, here we go. We'll open this one up. It's the one we did previously. It was here. And if you look on the right of here, you see it was 102 gigs in size. It was quite a large file. Now, if you don't have as many products as we do installed on the system, you're not going to. It's not going to be quite so large. So, but this took four hours for 102 gigs. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to open that up. It might take it quite a while to open since it's quite large. So uh, we will go ahead and just uh, minimize this and get rid of our paths here. We hope you enjoyed this video presentation and hope you learned something. If you're going to upgrade your to the new DAS Studio 4.9 or even later and you're using DAS Studio 4.8, this should get you through how to get a backup of all your content without any problems. Uh, we hope you learned something from this and it helps you out. Have a great day.